Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, again, thank you for being here, and uh, we really appreciate it. I know it's a little late, so we'll try to get through this as quickly as we can. Uh, my name is Luis Rosero. I'm the Technology Sector Manager, and presenting today on behalf of the Technology Sector are going to be Anya Schmidt, Jeffrey Delva, and Sashila Baker. So with that being said, I'd like to pass along to Sashila so you can get us started. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, tonight we're going to focus on our outline for tonight. It's going to focus on the background, the macro, the technology, and the industry outlook for you guys, as well as present our recommendation and our company analysis. Our company is Micron. It was founded in 1978. We're present in over 20 plus countries, as well as we employ about 30,000 plus employees. We do possess over 20,000 um, plus patents, as well as we, we were awarded the 2014 Digital Technology of the Year Award. We are the broadest memory solutions, um, we have the broadest memory solutions portfolio, I'm sorry, and we're the fourth largest semiconductor um, company globally. Next, I want to bring your attention to our currency slide. Uh, we want to touch on the currency slide because our company does uh, operate a lot of our business internationally. So we want to, our company is a little leveraged, so we want to talk about the Fed funds. Fed funds rate is important to bring that to your attention. We do know interest rates are potentially rising as early as September. So with that being said, if that does happen, that will affect our company and our debt. As far as our, we do possess a lot of variable bonds or some variable bonds. Uh, reserve requirement ratio um, is, is a requirement of the Bank of China, and we are present in, um, the, in the market, Chinese market and the Taiwan market. Uh, with that being said, um, the, Ch the Bank of China does control monetary policy for Taiwan as well, and we do have about 55% of our revenues coming from that market. We want to look, touch on quantitative easing as well because we do have 15% of our revenues from the Eurozone in Japan, and with that being said, we know the quantitative easing happening there um, is a good uh, um, positive relationship or positive thing for our company as well. Um, our next slide is talking, focusing on demand. Uh, with that being said, I did allude to that 55% of our revenues coming from the, the Chinese and the Taiwan market. 40% uh, specifically comes from China, and uh, we do know there's a substantial shift happening in the consumer consumption in China, and within the next uh, five years in the middle class specifically. Um, with Also, 15% is coming from the Asia-specific region, and with com combining those two markets, that's where we get our 55% of our revenues as well, and our company is trying to go more into that market, or shift more into that market. Also, we are doing a, um, recent acquisitions that we have made in that market is uh, ties into our company philosophy, and we are also all, um, allocating more resources to produce more there, to increase our profits there, as well as keeping more of our money um, overseas. So that's going to help with our currency exposure risk. This is just showing a, a pictorial um, uh, example of the accelerating growth in technology. It's a really broad, it over, covers a lot, over a little 500 years. We want to focus a little bit more to the upper right hand um, corner of the slope. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure you guys can see it really well, but uh, after the dot com era, there was a boom in technological products, and all these products use our, our product, semiconductor chips. That's what fuels these products. Uh, some of the devices and company that does use our chips are present on this slide right here. Uh, we are number one in automotive solutions, um, hence we have an image of Tesla up there. All these, all cars nowadays are more commuter computerized and more technology savvy, and they do possess our semiconductor chips. As well as we are present in aerospace industry, um, in the cockpit of planes, they do use our semiconductor chips as well. I want to bring your attention to um, the middle of the slide to Huawei. Um, sorry if I'm presenting, um, pronouncing that wrong, but they are the number one smartphone device in China. And with that being said, with our presence in China being so strong, it's a positive relationship for us as well um, with that cell phone manufacturer device. This uh, image is just showing an example of Moore's Law. Um, it's very important to us because Moore's Law states that memory um, should increase every two years on chips. And at the beginning of the timeline, as you can see, uh, its chips are much bigger in size, holding less memory. And gradually, as you go along the, the timeline, chips are decreasing in size and holding more memory. But the, we're reaching a point in the industry right now where chips even though they're smaller in size, they're not holding as much memory as before, and that's a problem currently in the industry, which our company has a solution for with our partnership with Intel. We have come up with a new generation chip that will solve the industry problem. Now I'm going to transition to Jeff, who will continue our presentation for you guys. 
Thank you, Sheila. As we continue our presentation, I would like to touch on the partnerships that we have formed to continue to help our company grow and expand. We have a 33% minority interest in Inoterra, which provides the components for which we use to make our semiconductors. In addition, we make up 90%. We make up 90% of Inoterra's revenue, which, as a result, they're required to sell us these components at a below market price. We also embarked on a 50-50 joint venture with Intel. This venture was to address the issue of Moore's Law. Um, by combining bo both of our resources, we came up with a disruptive technology, as Sheila has mentioned, and I will elaborate on in, in further slides. We also have an undisclosed minority stake in Kingston. And as you can see, this has been our foray into the USB and flash drive market. In addition, it's also beneficial to us because now it allows us to move into that space and take market share from competitors such as Sandus. We also have a strategic alliance with Seagate, which is our 4A into the market of service as a software, which you guys know as cloud and enterprise software. The disruptive technology that we've been talking about is none other than the 3D NAND. It has the highest density the lowest cost, the most memory, the best scalability. Most importantly, it has three times more capacity. It's two times faster and 20% less power consumption, meaning that you can store more, decrease latency, and do all of that while also using less energy. One of the tools that we used to analyze Micron to see if it was worth the investment was Porter's Five Forces. Through using this tool, we came across we discovered that the new entrance threat was low for our sector. The reason being is because usually there are high fixed costs associated, which can range from hundreds of millions to even tens of billion dollars, which is not too attractive for those who are not that experienced in that field. Our competition is high, and it's not just in the semiconductor sector, but it's in technology in general. Our substitute threats are medium because reverse engineering is very common in our field where competitors will take, take our products, break them apart, and find a way to produce them to make them better and produce them at a more cost-effective price. Our vendor power is low. Simply for what I mentioned earlier, our minority interests in, in Oterra, they have to sell us these products at below market price. Our customer power is low because we dictate our prices and not our customers. The reason being is that none of our customers make up more than 7% of our revenue. With our SWOT analysis, as I've mentioned before, the 3D NAND chip, it's faster, it can store more, and use less energy. Our Chinese consumer, as Cecilia has mentioned earlier, we have a growing demand in that market. We're number one in automotive solutions. Now, our weaknesses include the Samsung and Apple partnership. Now, you may or may not know, but Samsung has agreed to produce 75% of the chips that are supposed to go into the next iPhone 6S, the iPad, and the iWatch. This is, we view this as a short-term weakness for us because losing a client like Apple is always going to affect your bottom line negatively. However, in the long term, we see this as a benefit. The reason being we see it as a benefit is because Samsung will not be capable of producing chips for both itself and for Apple and cover the rest of the market. So the rest of the market that Samsung cannot cover will be ours for the taking. PC demand and DRAM market share are interrelated because DRAM is the component that's mainly used in PCs. And because PC demand has been decreasing in, in the past years, so has our DRAM market share. However, we have been shifting away from the PC space and moving t more towards mobile and things such as tablet, which is where the 3D NAND comes in. Our threats are threats that everyone in our industry faces, such as escalating price wars and consumer preferences, which we do not have a control over. I will pass it on to Anya, who will dive into our company analysis and our recommendation. Um, thank you very much, Jeff. Um, so again, we are going to focus on our competitive analysis here. We decided to um, focus on four key ratios, uh, profitability, liquidity, valuation, and management effectiveness. Now, in terms of profit profitability, we are doing exceedingly well, outperforming both the narrow comms and the industry average. 
Um, in terms of uh, valuation, we are an undervalued company, and this is simply because we are highly leveraged, and therefore the market has discounted our future growth prospects. Um, so nevertheless, our liquidity ratios are really strong, and uh, this is because we do have $5 billion worth of free cash flow. So if we chose to go ahead and actually take care of our debt, we could do that. Uh, our current debt is $4 billion, so we could actually go ahead and eradicate that debt and still have enough money to operate the business. Plus, our, um, our interest coverage ratio currently is 9, so it means that we can actually go ahead and take care of any payments if we were to have any. Um, the main reason why we're not doing that right now is because our return on assets is 10.6%, whereas our return on debt is 5.5%. Uh, so it really makes no sense for us to uh, take care of the debt if we could reinvest that money back into the business and expand. So this brings us to our financials. Um, if you take a look at the four key uh, metrics here, we have revenues, EBITDA, net income, and earnings per share. I guess the first thing you would probably notice is the year 2012. Um, this was during a time where the CEO passed away suddenly, and we didn't have uh, a CEO for at least six months, so we didn't really have any strategic leadership during this time. Um, once we replaced the CEO, he went ahead with the acquisition of Elpida, memory, um, Elpida, sorry, and uh, this, acquisition resulted in an increase in revenues. I think 80, the increase was 80.3%. Um, again, I would like to highlight what Jeff said. We do have a partnership with um, Intel. So once we launch our products in the third quarter of this year, uh, we can also expect to see uh, revenues grow tremendously. And so this brings us to our valuation. We have six different models here. We took a blended average of these models and we're able to obtain uh, the target price of $36.27. In terms of assumptions, um, our pessimistic growth rate currently is 2%, which is a function of GDP. Since we operate in the technology sector, we decided to go with a higher number because the uh, technology sector grows at a faster pace than GDP, so it made more sense for us to do that. And finally, this brings us to our recommendation. Clearly, we believe that Micron is, um, is a company you should invest in. The current price is $28.88. Our target price is $36.27 with a percentage ups with a percent upside of $25.59. Again, when you take a closer look at our P and PEG ratios, you can see that we are highly undervalued and uh, the market has not been able to identify um, our growth potential and for that reason, we do believe that my, uh, Micron is a buy. Additionally, when you look at our key drivers, you see that we have strong strategic partnerships that Jeff talked about. We also have the uh, next generation 3D NAND chips, which will launch and ship in the third quarter of this year. Plus, we do have a, a lot of competitive advantages. So once we combine all these strong key drivers, it makes a lot of sense for us to say invest in this company. So with that being said, um, I'd like to open up the floor for questions. <laughs> Good job, guys. Uh, I'd like to, Nina? Well, I have a couple of questions. Yes. Um, the first one, when um, was that announcement that Samsung is going to be partnering up with Apple? I believe that happened in March or February of this year. So it was very recent. And what was the stock reaction to that? Our stock went down. Like how much? Initially. Uh, that day, I couldn't tell you the exact percentage, but it did go down. Cause I was watching it and I did get the alerts on my phone, but I couldn't give an exact percentage. <laughs> so, and another question is, again, relates to that. Um, once that happens, um, let's say they start producing, so how much of a hit to the revenue potentially could that be? Well, last year Apple was 13 or 12 percent of revenues, so it's a substantial hit. However. We were also losing a lot of margin on that. So think of it as like the quote unquote Walmart example, right? I'm going to buy a million of these things from you, but I'm going to kind of tell you when I'm going to pay for them. So that's what happened last year. So last year was a great quarter for Micron, but they decided that that's too big of a risk for them to take just from the project, from the gross margin perspective alone. Um, additionally, the relationship is not really sustainable because, again, we are currently manufacturing our third and fourth generation 3D NAND products, whereas Samsung is currently only manufacturing their first generation products. And so once um, Apple realizes that, they're going to gravitate towards us and then we control prices because we have better products and then we can actually address their needs as well. So I'd like to add that. I think I told you that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please.
Yes. Oh, who would like to go first? Paper, um, rock, scissors? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'll go first. This is kind of a follow-up on the sure. theme that we've been on. So I, I cheated again on this one. I have an analyst that uh, okay. cover, covers the stock, and I sent him an email. Oh, and geez. I, I asked him to feed me a good question. It was very similar to, uh, to Nina's. Yeah. And uh, his question is, well, how can a specialized small memory chip maker compete against Samsung, which is a world-class mega company that has foundry services, as you point out, with Apple, make TVs, they make LCD panels, smartphones, tablets, watch machines, refrigerators, you know, it's just a massive company with much, much greater resources. In the long run, how does this little company compete against the massive Samsung? Well, with that being said, I believe it all alludes to 3D NAND and the technology that was there. So let me just take us back to that slide, if you don't mind. So we've seen, or Micron has seen the 3D NAND. This is the next generation of chips. So it all goes back to Moore's Law a little bit, and I'll, I will eventually get to answer your question. I just need to get there. Um, so this is going to be the reason. So per what we've seen in everybody else's pipelines, this is a better solution. And what they've done is kind of they've been sending it out to their customers So for the last year to test it out. So they've actually had this technology available for a year. And now they're going to start to ramp up production and start shipping out in the third quarter. So with that, with that question there of Samsung, yes, I believe there might be some short-term pain for Micron. But in the long run, it's going to be a better product, it's going to be faster, and everything's going mobile. So the whole thing with 3D NAND, it's a different architecture on 2D NAND, which is what everybody's using right now. So eventually, we believe the market's going to see that three, this 3D NAND solution that we offer is a better solution than what anybody else has. So yes, absolutely, we're not saying that it's not going to be a significant headwind, but we need to look past that as long-term and value investors. Yes? Questions about the impact, the projections you had going forward, does, I assume that already takes that into account, the loss of the Apple business, the revenue, the gross margin? Yes, yeah, so what we've seen is that it was a little difficult to kind of forecast it out just due to the fact that 2014 was the first year that Alpedo was underneath the Micron, so it was the first year that they closed. Um, so we actually took a very conservative approach with the compounded audio growth rate of 6%. Um, so. I believe it should be a little bit higher. That's actually on the low end of my conservative estimates. Maybe we were looking at something like seven or eight for the next five years. Um, so yeah, I believe just that 2% difference makes makes a big difference. And a lot of that was because of the headwinds and the risk. Discounted, the, the valuation discount. I, I would think it's opposed to the debt structure, which doesn't sound like it's that high, really. Well, that it's more to do with uh, the stock taking a hit after the Apple Samsung announcement, perhaps? Well, actually, it's been, for whatever reason, this year they've just taken a big hit to the stock. And yes, there's been some headwinds with that. But one thing I did want to point out is that earlier this year, the other thing, too, is that the debt, the reason the debt was such an, is such an overhang is because it's convertible debt. So there's that chance at shared dilution. So what just recently happened, Micron is trying to convert all that convertible debt. If <laughs> I don't use enough converting there. Um, so they're making it fixed. So recently, they've actually closed everything off with the convertible debt, so is there, there's no more chance to share dilution anymore. So we believe just, I mean, just on a multiple expansion alone, the, the stock could see the appreciation that we're talking about. Yes. Oh, it's a technical question related to 3D NAND, but it's oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that he's a genius? Yes, you did. So. <laughs> Run for your life. <laughs> I, you know what? It's getting kind of late. I'm not sure that. <laughs> looking back at the, I mean, that PE ratio for a company, a tech company, is incredibly low, and, and obviously a lot of them because of the hit they took, right? Yes. And, and so tell me, tell me more, you know, about this as far as like, you know, what you think. You know, this is obviously, if, if this becomes, if this chip is actually what you think it's going to be, this company is actually quite cheap. Of course, yeah. Um, the whole underlying thesis for us investing in the company is the fact that the 3D NAND solution is better than what anyone else has out there. Um, and the fact that it doesn't show up now, it could show up on the iPhone 7X iteration or the 8X iteration. That's where we're going to see this value because increasingly, just like just like our computer software, right, uh, we needed 
faster and faster hard drives to get there. So just from a technology perspective, there's kind of a bottleneck right now. Um, and so this actually decreases latency. It allows you to move everything a lot quicker. It allows you to have, you know, high, I guess, flash memory apps that won't take a significant hit to performance. Yes. Actually, my question is related to 3D NAND because yes. it seems like you're betting a lot on 3D NAND. And while I agree it is new technology, what is the cost of it? As opposed, because 20% isn't really a lot when you're thinking about an iPhone. The memory components on an iPhone right now, the RAM is taking so much little space physically that I can't imagine unless the cost is there and the power is so much like it doesn't seem like what if Apple doesn't bite? Because you well, have this great technology, but if Apple doesn't bite, is your company doomed? Are you going to lose market share? What's going to happen? No, due to the fact that, I, I, like I said, yes, it's obviously a big hit when you lose Apple. But since we are so prevalent in other mobile solutions that aren't Apple, and it's tough because we live in a very U.S.-centric world, so everything's Apple. So if you go overseas, and I mean Pacific overseas, it's everything's not Apple. There's a huge, huge component of the market there that's the middle class, and there's a huge component of people that have are never going to own a laptop. They're all, they're, their first foray into the Internet is going to be a mobile phone, and that's why we st uh, specifically highlighted the Huawei phone. Because we, they are a customer of ours. So, I mean, yes, we're betting a little bit on it, but we believe that just that growth component in that market alone dictates our growth rate. <laughs> so, thank you, guys. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. How many in favor of this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it passes. Thank you so much.